Oh my gosh, uh, did you hear about the new Pokemon Go update? No, what new Pokemon Go update? You can catch hosts now, watch. Hey, Ben! <gasps> <laughs> Wait, I wanna try! <laughs> okay. Sorry, yeah, sorry guys. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to Critical, Critical Damage. Damage. Welcome to Critical Damage. This is our last episode of this season, and we have something fun. Episode four, I'm joined by fellow hosts, Ben and Piper. Say hello. 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 And today, we're gonna to be talking about how does evolving technology change immersion? So Piper, how do you wanna start us off in answering this question? Okay, well, you know, we've got all these new things uh, coming to play. We've got that, um, the rumors about the PlayStation controller that heats up when you're like in a volcano or something. <laughs> We've got the VR headsets, and we've got the things in the past like the Kinect and other um, AR or VR technology. I think things are definitely evolving, but not all of them are winners. Um, yeah, I mean, I think VR is probably the most notable out of like new things that are coming out. Um, AR, we can talk about them a little bit, but AR is a complete failure as far as the things that they've come out with, like Pokemon Go and like the uh, the Minecraft app that they had. I don't remember the name of the game, but. No one even know about it anyways. I did <laughs> but, not um, know there was one. Well, yeah. There's a Minecraft but, um, AR game. It came and went, and I don't think anyone missed it. It had like a month spree, so it's probably fair that you don't know about it. But um, <laughs> VR that came out, it's, I feel like VR would be a lot bigger and a lot better if it was more accessible to people. There's like a huge financial barrier where it's like, you have to pay $600 for a PS5, and now you have to double that for a VR headset. Mm -hmm. And it's like, who wants to do that when I can just play normal video games? Yeah, but, it's so um, inaccessible. And uh -huh. also, there aren't too many games for VR. There's so many more games that you can just play with like a normal console. Mm -hmm. But, and to spend, to drop that much money on a VR headset and not have that many games to play is just not worth it in the long run. Okay, so I think we can all establish that. I think as technology advances, it kind of brings video games along with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I think my early examples of that is, I'm going to look at Nintendo for a second. With each generation of console they kind of release and a different style of controller, you kind of get a different feel for their video games. Like, even though other consoles like Xbox, PS4 kind of kept the same base controller layout, we, like Nintendo Switch, even looking at, like, the Game GameCube controllers and 64, mm -hmm. They, Nintendo's really unique, and every time they upgraded their technology, updated it. Sometimes I didn't upgrade. It changed how you play those games. And then you look at how that's also affecting VR. It's kind of driving this new generation of games, which I think is really cool. But do you guys think that along this evolving technology, do you think we've hit the point where we should just kind of stay where we are? Or do you think these other platforms, like VR and AR, really have a place to overtake what we know as the common video game experience? So I think that we keep on evolving hardware, but I don't think the hardware sells games. I think the games sell the hardware in a way. So you might have this really cool flashy, um, like for example, like you went from the Wii U to the Nintendo Switch, which like that was a big upgrade. And you're like, wow, this is so much easier to use. And um, just like overall a lot better than what they had. But the only games that they had on the Nintendo Switch were like, Legend of Zelda that came out, Breath of the Wild. And even then, I, uh, the Wii U, well, the Nintendo Switch hasn't had much more success than the Wii U did. Um, so I think we can keep on pushing it and going, yeah, let's do cool tech. But like, if you don't have a game to accompany with it, no one's going to bother with it. Um, a lot of like, going back to VR real quick, VR is really cool and they keep on developing it. But a lot of the games that they have on there are like games you could play normally. So like, they take games like Resident Evil and they're like, oh, we're going to add a VR function to it but you could just play that game on like your, your computer or on your Xbox and stuff like... Uh, I think it's yeah, there's there's a Hitman like version. Yeah, you can play Hitman stuff like on yeah. VR, but it works. It's so much clunkier than just playing it normally. Right, yeah. But I feel like those games kind of create a whole new sense of immersion. Like Resident Evil in VR, it's completely new sense of being really terrified of this game. When you sit down and play it, you might not get the sense of being terrified and like really scared by this what's supposed to be a horror game 
But now you play it in VR and you can hear like cockroaches crawling in here. You can look around, see the abandoned buildings, the zombies. It's a whole next step in immersion. And I think that's great. I think that although VR might not be tailored for everyone, and there's a lot of reasons for that, like motion sickness, mm -hmm. you have like misconceptions about the genre, price tag. I think that next level of immersion is where video games need to go. I personally don't think VR is going to be the future of video games. I think that um, I think consoles are always going to be the main way that people consume video games, especially because VR kind of it excludes people. I personally I can't play any VR games. It makes me really motion sick or gives me terrible motion sickness, which kind of you know cuts me from being able to play those games. And it almost feels a little bit like. The, the 3D craze, like 10 whatever years ago, mm. every movie was in 3D. And now we're kind of going past that. And I feel like we're kind of in the age of VR and we're going to move past that in the future. I think compared to a lot of the other things that are coming out, um, for example, you made mention to like heating up controllers. That's like a patent. That's a thing being developed right now. Um, I think VR is a, is a great next step into immersion, where mm -hmm. it's like now I can actually experience this. Like I am more the player than I was before, even though in some of the cases the RPGs are still the player or the, the character from the game. But um, I think there's a, a line there a little bit where it's like, yeah, now I'm like the person, but how much more realistic do you want to make it? I mean, like, I can make a comparison and be like, I feel like if a game's immersive enough in itself, I don't need the controller to heat up to, like, a thousand degrees because I'm next to a volcano. I feel like I just get annoying at that point. Yeah. And, like, I, it's the same thing, like, with, like, movies and stuff. Like you said, if you go to a 3D movie, I don't need, like, my chair to shake and, like, bubbles to blow in my face mm -hmm. for me to be like, whoa, this is a crazy movie. I feel like I'm in it, you know? So. So what do you guys think about AR? I think AR has a lot of potential. I'm not going to lie. Uh, there's really? there's a lot of places that AR I think really could be implemented really cool into the real world. Uh, to explain, AR is basically Pokemon Go. It's taking video game characters mm -hmm, and things yeah. and putting them in the real world. In contrast to VR, which is taking us and putting ourselves into video game world. VR is a lot more immersive, where you're in their world. AR is we take them and put them in our world. Yeah. Back to AR, I think AR has a future, maybe not in video games. Yeah. Because I think AR is a really cool concept. I think we've seen a lot of science fiction and movies and games and a lot of fictional ways to use AR. And I think those look really cool. But I think when it comes down to it, technology hasn't got there yet. Yeah. I think once technology caps, catches up a little, like when it, there, it's, it's available out there, glasses that lets you have an AR setup right in front of your face. Not the Google Glass? Not the Google Glass. <laughs> it is the, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it exists, it's out there. It's not the greatest, but they exist. And I think as long as that technology continues to develop, I think AR has potential. It's not there right now, mm -hmm. and it's getting a horrible misconception around it. Yeah. But once technology advances, I think AR is going to change the video game market. To, to be fair, with AR, the most accessible platform that people have is like your phone, where you pull it out and you have Pokemon Go, or you have like the Minecraft game. Um, where it's like any person with a phone, which is most people nowadays, uh, can be able to play these games, which is a lot better than having to drop all that money on a console. Um, but just the, the games themselves are like, like you said, just really like behind in a way. Yeah. Where it's like, Pokemon Go is cool, and like the concept is cool, but like other Pokemon games, at least in my opinion, are a lot cooler. Mm -hmm. I just, the quality, just everything about it is like Pokemon Go, just a step up. It's just because like the whole AR quality is like the big seller, so. I, I just think technology is to get there. Once these, yeah. once phones, once other forms of using AR become available, like, could you imagine when, like, the Nintendo Switch gets to the point where it could be an AR system, or mm -hmm. yeah. you could carry around, like, on your glasses, like, being able to, like, virtually create and see these AR constructs, like Free Guy. I don't know if you guys saw that movie. That was a good movie. It did play with these concepts a lot, and I think that is where the future, of, like, video game technology should go. Yeah, I think it will, I'd like to imagine it, it will reach that point where AR becomes a big part of the video game industry and just like, you know, technology in general, but we're obviously not there yet. And I personally think that VR is not the future. AR, I think, is a more um, foreseeable way of getting into the video game. So why don't you think VR is going anywhere? I think VR... Um, it's too inaccessible. You're, spend, you're walking around with a big thing around your eyes. <laughs> the amount of injuries people get 
playing VR games because they're running into walls or something along those lines. I think by integrating video game things into our world, it makes it more accessible to more people and hopefully would tamper down injuries and things like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, to have a good VR experience, a lot of people are like, oh, I need a whole room. I will admit, I've run into a wall while playing VR before. It's happened. <laughs> you have? Almost knocked over a bookshelf once, but it's okay. So, <laughs> okay. I mean, people have these whole rooms where they have dedicated to VR. And yeah. it's just like, a lot of people who have these, like, consoles and stuff don't have that. So yeah. it's like, I feel like VR, when it came out, was way ahead of its time, in a way, where they're like, let's push this, because we think it'll be really successful. But if it would have come out just like, five, ten years later, maybe it would have been different now. But the mm -hmm. perception is really, really uh, skewed, in a way. I think VR just suffers from a lot of people still thinking back to when it was released. When VR came out, it needed four cameras to capture your environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It needed cables connected to every little section to like, connect to the computer, whatever console is being run on. VR isn't like that anymore. Like, although it is still expensive. But like, VR can run wirelessly. It can run a lot more games than we know about because a lot mm -hmm. of us don't have it. Yeah. There are ways to finance it. There's a lot more accessibility in VR, and I feel like these misconceptions really kind of drag it down a lot more than it deserves to. By no means do I think VR is for everyone. There's still a lot of issues with it, but I think VR has potential to kind of take over the video game industry come another 10 or so years when technology kind of catches up to the concept. Before we finish up, what are some um, immersion techniques that um, video game companies use that you personally like? Uh, I can say what I dislike is okay. I didn't realize until I was about two months into playing the game that when you play Spider-Man, like the PS4 or PS5, I played it remastered on my, on my uh, personal computer. And when you plug in a controller, a PS5 controller, I didn't know that they just put the web swing sound outside, placed through the controller speakers, oh. and I had headphones in, so for mm -hmm. two months, pointless immersion was being used on the controller making noise instead of like me hearing it in the headphones. Oh, yeah. And there's so many elements like that. There are the lots of noises that come from the controller that you kind of miss if you're playing with headphones. It makes no so. sense. Yeah. I mean, I don't I'm, I'm simple to please. I feel like as long as the game is good, I don't need yeah, anything then on the outside. Then you, I'm you like, just need bright colors. Bright, flashy colors. The vibrating controller. That's, that's good enough for me. All I don't right. need anything more. That's yeah. fine with me. That sounds so, good. Yeah. All right. Well, then we're going to wrap our discussion here. Let's throw it over to Aiden and Kath for First Frame News. Thanks, Michael. Hello, everyone, and welcome to First Frame News. My name is Aiden Sism. And I'm Catherine Hebert, and we will be bringing you the latest gaming news. We are kicking it off with an eSports roundup. Months back, popular content creator Disguised Host announced he was spending $500,000 to create a Valorant team that would compete in the Challengers Tournament. This sparked immediate attention, as fans had no idea what the outcome of this would be. The team has been competing so far with its fair share of wins and losses, and even picking up new players, such as professional Valorant player Ye, who has played for Optic and Cloud9. Communication between Ye and Disguised Toast started over Twitter back in February, when Ye was released from his previous team. Toast saw the opportunity at hand, with Ye being a free agent, and successfully signed him onto his roster. Switching gears, Snoop Dogg has left the FaZe Clan board. Snoop Dogg joined FaZe back in March of 2022 as a board member and content creator. Speculation surrounding the departure is geared towards stock issues FaZe has been facing since earlier this year. However, in a statement released from FaZe, this decision was not the result of any sort of disagreement between either party. Dracula got the best of Bethesda? Many people are asking this as Bethesda and Arcane Studios prepares to launch Redfall, an open-world vampire hunting RPG, on May 5th. Even before the game's launch, many gamers, including myself, are very disappointed to learn that the game will only be available in an always online state. This renders the game inaccessible to players with little or no internet connection. This is not the only negative thing about release, as it has been confirmed the game will only provide 30 FPS on the Xbox Series S and X consoles. This is a far cry from what many were expecting from one of Bethesda's major studio launches. And this has many questioning the future of the company and their releases, including upcoming Starfield. 
Nintendo Live is set to be hosted in Seattle, Washington and go up in September of this year. It was reported that Nintendo did not feel it had enough big releases for a show such as E3, which they pulled out of it before it was cancelled. Nintendo Live was held in Tokyo last year after being put on pause due to COVID-19. This year, attendees will get a new experience to celebrate the world of Nintendo. Performances from beloved characters, photo ops and tournaments can be expected at the event. Despite no word of any new announcements at the show, there will still be plenty for fans to enjoy at their live event. Super Mario Bros. the movie has double jumped right past $700 million in the box office over the weekend. This marks the largest video game movie ever just two weeks after its release with much more to come. The movie has also become the biggest global animated movie of all time, usurping Frozen 2. This opens the doors for many other Nintendo franchises to potentially make the jump to the big screen. Me and many other members of the cast went and saw the movie this weekend and found it to be a charming and enjoyable experience. This not only represents the game, but elevates the franchise to a narrative that has not been doable before. And who can forget Jack Black singing Peaches, the song that has cracked the Billboard Hot 100. One of Halo's ex-creative leads, Joseph Staten, is now developing a triple-A title with Netflix games. Recently, the well-known streaming service has been getting involved with the gaming industry, opening up game studios, recruiting developers, and releasing titles on their mobile app for subscribers. Staten has left his previous position with 343 Industries as the head of creative for Halo Infinite. He announced on Twitter he has joined Netflix Games as their creative director for a multi-platform game and original property. We look forward to seeing what Staten and the development team creates in the future. Who doesn't love sitting back after a long day of class, hopping into a Discord call with your friends, playing some Minecraft, and leaking confidential military documents for bragging rights? That's right, top secret military documents involving classified details on the war in Ukraine were leaked inside a Discord server. An Air National Guard member was arrested by federal officials for sharing these documents in what has been one of the largest government leaks in recent years. And there we have it. Thank you all for joining us this season for First Frame News. Now, let's head over to the table. Hello and welcome back. In our first frame, we discussed how technology affects immersion in games. Now we're going to be putting our hosts to the test and seeing how creative that they are. We have our own version of Shark Tank here, where basically each of our hosts are going to be taking a moment, about a minute, to go ahead and come up with an invention that helps with game immersion. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and get started, we'll continue explaining. Um, how this works, they're going to take a minute to basically go ahead Wait, and draw am I their going? Inventions. Yeah, go ahead. Here we go. Oh, Jesus. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Jesus. They're going to take a minute, they're going to go ahead and draw their invention. Afterwards, we're going to go ahead and swap spots. We're going to have our next two hosts get up and draw theirs. And wow. afterwards, each of them will have two minutes to pitch their uh, inventions to me as the judge. And then uh, I'll go ahead and determine which ones uh, I think are the best, basically. So. Piper's yeah. going yeah, off yeah, Piper's over there. Like, <laughs> oh, um, wow. Michael, what am Michael. I looking at? I have literally a minute, all right? Yeah, two hands. Dude, I think I, I think I've seen kindergartners draw better than that. I don't know. <laughs> wait, <I'd>... wait, <laughs> Piper's, wait Piper's, that's so... Wow. I think I know where she's going with that, Michael. I'm going to be honest, I have no idea where you're going with that. I, I don't think Michael knows where he's no, going. No, I don't think Honestly, Michael knows where he's going with that either, but it's... What is... Oh, is he, oh, is he drawing more He seems he, to be etching some sort of like doing elvish that. language into the... Michael, uh, you only have so, such a little time. Shh, shh. Oh, I'm being, I'm being just hyper, looking good. Wow, oh, you're doing look great. at the detail on that oh, handle. Oh, she's, she's wow. doing, guys, your time is, your time is about to be up. And then there's, you guys, that was a little rough for you. Oh, guys, it looks okay. like time is up for Four, you guys. Four, three, oh, two, wow. one, and it is over. No, it's uh, not. It is over. No, it's not. <laughs> stop, no, stop. <laughs> My, okay. Michael, I'm sorry. Marker down. What? There you go, okay. Wow. That. Nothing. Uh, okay. okay, so now right. we're going to transition. Kath, Aiden, go ahead and get up and go to your post. Oh boy. Good Mike, luck. Piper, come have a seat. Yep. Give right. them their um, minute to uh -oh. draw theirs. One minute is not enough to <laughs> revolutionize the game industry. Uh, I mean, I think I did. All right. All right. Three, two, one, go! Oh, All right, uh, let's see what Aiden's got. Aiden's got a line. All right. Another line. He's making yeah, a box. It's a grid. It's going. a grid. Um, it yeah, seems yeah, to be a box of some yeah, sort. Sure, I'm not sure. For sure. It looks like a bean, but you know, I'm here for it. Um. Yeah, okay. Loving the bean. What? Okay, Aiden. I think that is a bean. Aiden is frantic. <laughs> Wait, hold on. You can make it Mjolnir if you just put like a little thing on the bottom. Guys, that's not what it is. Oh do, do we have any idea what Aiden is? No, I will be honest. I don't I, know. I what think that it's is. a jigsaw piece. Oh, it looks like okay. a buzzsaw. Guys, I'm getting creative <laughs> with the way that it looks. Uh, that looks like, guys, like a mask. I'm, I'm seeing whiskers over there on Kath's. Oh, that's so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> is that okay? okay. So yeah. That just looks like um, I don't know, an Illuminati, but like. A weirdly shaped Illuminati. I thought it was Minecraft really Steve, and it was a depiction of his brain. Oh, 
Oh, it's not like on a person, maybe? I don't know. You gotta have a really square head for a TV Yeah, oh, on a Minecraft person. Maybe, maybe a Minecraft person. You're done person. so early. What? Yeah. Okay, hey, Kat, five. You're really slow Four. over there. Three, <laughs> two, one. one. Put your markers down. Happy New Year. Aiden! Okay. <laughs> Adam, right. like he told me to put it down. I put it all right, down. All right. all right, now here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna have all of you get up, get next to your drawings, and we're gonna go down the line, one by one, back and forth. And basically, you guys are gonna have two minutes to go ahead and pitch your invention. And uh, yeah, no, we'll see. Game is Ladies rigged. First. Yeah, yeah. This Ladies judge first. stinks. Oh, yeah, here we go. Start with me first? Okay. Go ahead. All right, yeah, go ahead. I'll go. So I basically, I am a, uh, I use a PS4, PS5. So I decided uh -huh. to make a PS4, 5, whatever, controller, but it's a sword. So that gives you that immersion of the game. Um, it would be weighted like a real sword, so you would, you know, you'd be getting your exercise in, building up your arm muscles, and then on the, uh, was it the hilt? I don't know. I don't know swords. You've uh -huh. got the buttons, and then that's the little like I forget what it's called, like the D-pad or something there, and then that's the power button at the bottom, and yeah, it's just to immerse you in the fighting games that are available on PlayStation. Okay, so this is like 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 a actual size sword. Yes. How do you it's not made how do you press the buttons? It's well you you're holding it and then you just like do like that. So you're not because there are some sections where you are pressing the buttons, right? Okay. But then there's also going to be sections when you're in a fight and you're going to actually be swinging the sword. So what stops me from like whacking someone? You just have That's, to you got to step back. Saw. You got to have space <laughs> around you. You know how in like the old uh -huh. Wii um, like ads or whatever, in bef before you did a game on the Wii, it would tell you to make sure you had like a big space around you uh, and always uh -huh. have a little warning before. We'll have to put that warning. You know, I'm noticing there's not a safety strap. Um, like, that, it's, yeah. it's sold Later. separately. Sold yeah. separately? Sold, 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 sold separately. Greedy. Wow. I feel like I could kill some money. That. <laughs> um, well, you'd be, you'd be getting strong in the process. There you go. So. Okay. Strength yeah, training. No. In yeah. one hand, though. Well, okay. You, you, no, you can switch. I, yeah, I guess both. You know, okay. You just, yeah, like you're fine. There are different sizes, you know. Some are one-handed, some are two-handed. There you go. Yeah. You didn't depict that. Aiden. Hold on. You're just splitting Aiden in half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll go ahead and move on. We want to go over to Aiden. And now this is your turn. Wait, what? We should go with Michael. Wait, yeah. No, should we go with Kath? No, right. but, okay. All right, yeah. it'll be me. So, I'm going to revolutionize the gaming industry with okay. an okay. AR system okay. that is a pair of sunglasses that you put on your face. So Google Glass. Google so Glasses, wait. except, now let me do my pitch. Okay, no, you I'm get listening. a little pair of fingerless gloves. So you can still interact with your environment with fingerless gloves, but the gloves also has buttons on the back like classic controllers, where you're able to manipulate what game you're playing in sight, but you also have gloves that will move based on motion. So if I'm here and I move my hand to the right, in game I move my hand to the right. So if I'm playing a game that involves motion, I can go like this, uh -huh. and in game I'll be able to do this. It's an AR system, but it has compatible gloves as well. Okay, I feel like I've seen this in a movie somewhere. Glasses, I've, they really exist. Yes, the glasses exist, but the gloves yeah. don't. And the pairing of them is where the immersive comes from. So the whole thing with the gloves is that they're just fingerless and that's the, that's the special part about the gloves? No, it's the that they're linked stuff? to the glasses. Uh-huh. Yeah. What exactly? picture, okay. picture like I can play Beat Saber anywhere. And I'm in an elevator alone, I could just pull, hit a Beat Saber song that real feels quick. Dangerous. Okay, you are making fun of my buttons. For yours, <laughs> you're gonna have to go like Yeah, this. exactly, use your other hand. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's that also has a impractical, glove on it, though, right? Yeah, but there's fingerless, so you can actually manipulate the gloves. Wait, so you're telling me I have to use my other hand to yes. press the buttons on the one? So what if you needed like, to press both yeah. buttons at the same time? Would you, you have like, to like bend your fingers? Okay, hold on. Like, what? No game is ever gonna make you do that. That's well, if you have, are, are you there buttons? Sure? Are you okay? <laughs> like, do you even, have you played? Are there <laughs> buttons on both? On both? Yes. Gloves? You can see. So I what if you need to press one button here and one button here? Then you no game would ever make you do that. There's, there's no way. That's how you play. <laughs> that's not that style of game. It's an AR game, not a VR game or a keyboard and mouse I'm game. I'm not buying it. It's not a controller. It's an it's AR system okay. with a controller on it. Okay. All right. Whatever. Okay. You don't see the vision. I forgot. I to don't. Say Ben's I don't. vision, right, Ben? No, I don't actually. <laughs> it's fine. No, I actually don't. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and move on from you. We're gonna go over to Cass. So mine's a little go less ahead. complicated. This is the snuffer sniffer, um, <laughs> and essentially okay. it's like a little mask that goes over your nose. And I wanted to make it like something that you could like customize so you could get like, you know, different, like this is like a cat, I think, um, <laughs> maybe. maybe. Uh, all I drew was the triangle nose and the whiskers and I was calling it a cat. Um, but maybe like one that's like a dog or like, I don't know, like a giraffe or something, you know what I'm saying? Like adding in the fun. But basically like set in, in you know, when you're playing games, lighting is, is one factor. You know, you have the scene itself, 
What about smelling the aroma? And that's where we bring in like a smell designer. And so you can smell the different areas that you're in when you're playing different games. You know what I'm saying? Good, bad, average. So would know? it have like smells like programmed into yes. it? Yes. I was thinking that there'd be like a little like backpack or like something that you'd like. A backpack? Yeah, like a little like strap on all the different all the smells. smells. Well, like, like, is, like, am I sitting at a keyboard back. playing this? Whatever you want. It's the snuffer sniffer. I don't know. <laughs> you, you tell. You're, you're the pitch. You tell me. <laughs> I can smell everything. Yeah. Everything. Yes. It's like what happens when I play uh, Resident uh, Evil and there's like rotting yeah. corpses everywhere. Uh oh. Like your choice. <laughs> All like, right. <laughs> we gotta, you want to uh, use the snuffer sniffer immersive. for that? Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I'm technically immersed. There you go. Very actually. It's I think the snuffer it, sniffer. Enough to the point. And you look like, cute too. Me. Does it go over your nose or your mouth and your nose? nose? Just your nose. Just the nose. Yeah. The snuffer sniffer. Okay. Right? All right. No, okay. Thank no, you. I see it. And it's a cosplay thing, yeah, right? Come on. Yeah, come no, on. Go ahead. Halloween. There's it's so, so there's so many layers. It's uh, so layered. I, it's so intricate. You what if you have this. to like blow your nose? You'd lose the immersion. Just. <laughs> 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 Yo, you're, bloody, you're bloody nose. That'd be a terrible. Bloody thing nose. You're ruining the device. Oh, it's no. done. That's a terrible thing to clean. You get a bloody yeah. nose. And you buy, buy another one. one. You buy a new one. How much you charging? Yeah, I don't want to have to replace it like every time I play a new game. Forty nine ninety nine. For the wow. snuffer snuffer. 49, wow. that's, 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 that's a fair price. price. That's a fair okay. price. Okay, let's, okay. let's take we want multiple ones right. of like different right. We're gonna, we're gonna stop me, with the me, pitches here. Let me set the scene for, for Ben, of course, in destiny terms. Okay. Let's see. Oh, you, no. You come Wait. home from a long day. You stepped in gum on the way. There was a weird man on the tee. What? There was, I, it was a really just terrible day, you know? You, you come home. And you're, you're, you're trying to get your Destiny raid party, but everyone takes way too long to get on. They finally get on. You spend like two hours, two hours going <laughs> through All right. your raid. No exotic engram. Nothing. <laughs> Punch it. That's it. Punch it. Get rid of all that anger. Let it out. It's gone. I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm what? speechless. You know, so as, it's, it's a punching bag. <laughs> yeah, you just punch it. As mm, no, that's okay. Now, as a rage gamer, no, I think I can, I can get by. <laughs> Works that. perfectly. You play League of no, Legends. Wow. You lose. You spend an hour. You uh, playing Overwatch. Team fight. Team fight after. Team fight. You lose. Team punch it. So, wow. so okay. it's just like a separate punching bag, just like buy your gaming card. How yeah, hard can I hit it? You, I mean, that was. You, <laughs> yeah, you know what? what? You know, you're right. Do what you want. Wow. I mean, it's yours. Okay. It's I at your disposal. I see its purpose. No, wow. Okay. I don't so, really see how it helps with go the for version, it. but. Aiden, just it for just presentation, just for presentation, Aiden, S tier invention. I'm not going to lie. Thank wow. you. That was pretty wow. good. Thank you. you appealed to your. Yeah, thank no, you. it was great. No, thank, thank you. you. Do um, you need us to punch ours? Yeah. No, next time, no, I, <laughs> violence is the answer. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to say, Pipers, very cool invention. I would probably say that's a close second to Aiden's. Okay. I like the concept of the sword. I could kill someone with it, though, which for some might be a hey, plus. Hey, violence yeah. is the answer, violence like is you the just answer. said. Very high, here, yeah. here in critical damage, violence is the answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kath, <laughs> um, you know, I don't want to smell rotting corpses. I'm not going to lie to you. You're valid for that. But just because I hate the, con the, the hand controllers. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Can I get unbiased. a gym moment on camera? This I is, could, this I is unbiased, I swear. I but no, I'm going to have to go ahead and take, give Kath third, and That's... we're going to give Mike fourth wow. for least innovative and least creative invention. Wow. Sorry, I just have to hammer it in there for you. you know? His was a wall, you punch. <laughs> he punched it. It was presentation. You wow. need. Presentation points. It's all about the pizzazz, right? <laughs> Rigged oh, rig election. That's what I'm calling this. I'm unbiased. You just got to step it up, Michael. I'm unbiased. Thank you guys. All right. This about wraps up our uh, inventions here. Thank you guys for watching the last episode of this season. I hope you guys had a great time. I had, a great, so time. I yeah. had a great time. Yeah. I, hope you had a great time. I think Cass was the best host on here. Oh. I think this one should get fired. <laughs> oh my God. He's going to disappear. Well, thank you so much. He'll never come back. Thank you so much for joining us this season, and we hope to see you next season. Bye. Bye.